an alternating current, ACK, also ACK, the flow of electric charge periodically reverses direction. And direct current, DC, also DC, the flow of electric charge is only in one direction. The abbreviations ACK and DC are often used to mean simply alternating and direct, as when they modify current or voltage. ACK is the form in which electric power is delivered to businesses and residences. The usual waveform of an ACK power circuit is a sine wave. In certain applications, different waveforms are used, such as triangular or square waves. Audio and radio signals carried on electrical wires are also examples of alternating current. In these applications, an important goal is often the recovery of information encoded, or modulated, onto the ACK signal. History The city lights of Prince George, British Columbia viewed in a motion blurred exposure. The ACK blinking causes the lines to be dotted rather than continuous. The first alternator to produce alternating current was a dynamo electric generator, based on Michael Faraday's principles constructed by the French instrument maker Hippolyte Pixiai in 1832. Pixiai later added a commutator to his device to produce the, then, more commonly used direct current. The earliest recorded practical application of alternating current is by Guillaume de Chen, inventor and developer of electrotherapy. In 1855, he announced that ACK was superior to direct current for electrotherapeutic triggering of muscle contractions. In 1876, Russian engineer Pavel Yablochkov invented a lighting system, based on a set of induction coils, where the primary windings were connected to a source of ACK. The secondary windings could be connected to several electric candles, arc lamps, of his own design. The coils Yablochkov employed functioned essentially as transformers. A power transformer developed by Lucien Gawler and John Dixon Gibbs was demonstrated in London in 1881, and attracted the interest of Westinghouse. They also exhibited the invention in Turin in 1884, where it was adopted for an electric lighting system. Many of their designs were adapted to the particular laws governing electrical distribution in the UK. Sebastian Zionidi Ferranti went into this business in 1882, when he set up a shop in London designing various electrical devices. Ferranti believed in the success of alternating current power distribution early on, and was one of the few experts in this system in the UK. In 1887 the London Electric Supply Corporation, LESCO, hired Ferranti for the design of their power station at Deptford. He designed the building, the generating plant and the distribution system. On its completion in 1891 it was the first truly modern power station, supplying high voltage act power that was then stepped down for consumer use on each street. This basic system remains in use today around the world. Many homes all over the world still have electric meters with the Ferranti act patent stamped on them. William Stanley Jr. designed one of the first practical devices to transfer act power efficiently between isolated circuits. Using pairs of coils wound on a common iron core, his design, called an induction coil, was an early transformer. The ACK power system used today developed rapidly after 1886, and included contributions by Nikola Tesla, licensed to George Westinghouse, and Carl Wilhelm Siemens. ACK systems overcame the limitations of the direct current system used by Thomas Edison to distribute electricity efficiently over long distances, even though Edison attempted to discredit alternating current as too dangerous during the War of Currents. The first commercial power plant in the United States using three-phase alternating current was at the Mill Creek No. 1 hydroelectric plant near Redlands, California, in 1893 designed by Almiri and Decker. Decker's design incorporated 10,000-volt three-phase transmission, and established the standards for the complete system of generation, transmission, and motors used today. The American English's hydroelectric generating plant, spring of 1891, and the original Niagara Falls Adams Power Plant, August 25, 1895, were among the first hydroelectric act power plants. The Jiruka Hydroelectric Power Plant in Croatia was set in operation on 28 August 1895. The two generators, 42 Hz, 550 kW each, and the transformers were produced and installed by the Hungarian company GANS. The transmission line from the power plant to the city of Sibenik was 11.5 km miles, long on wooden towers, and the municipal distribution grid 3000V-110V included six transforming stations. 
alternating current circuit theory developed rapidly in the latter part of the 19th and early 20th century. Notable contributors to the theoretical basis of alternating current calculations include Charles Steinmetz, Oliver Heaviside, and many others. Calculations in unbalanced three-phase systems were simplified by the symmetrical components methods discussed by Charles Legit Fortescue in 1918. Transmission, distribution, and domestic power supply. Act voltage may be increased or decreased with a transformer. Use of a higher voltage leads to significantly more efficient transmission of power. The power losses in a conductor are a product of the square of the current and the resistance of the conductor, described by the formula. This means that when transmitting a fixed power on a given wire, if the current is doubled, the power loss will be four times greater. The power transmitted is equal to the product of the current and the voltage, assuming no phase difference, that is. Thus, the same amount of power can be transmitted with a lower current by increasing the voltage. It is therefore advantageous when transmitting large amounts of power to distribute the power with high voltages, often hundreds of kilovolts. High voltage transmission lines deliver power from electric generation plants over long distances using alternating current. These lines are located in eastern Utah. However, high voltages also have disadvantages, the main one being the increased insulation required, and generally increased difficulty in their safe handling. In a power plant, power is generated at a convenient voltage for the design of the generator, and then stepped up to a high voltage for transmission. Near the loads, the transmission voltage is stepped down to the voltages used by equipment. Consumer voltages vary depending on the country and size of load, but generally motors and lighting are built to use up to a few hundred volts between phases. The utilization voltage delivered to equipment such as lighting and motor loads is standardized, with an allowable range of voltage over which equipment is expected to operate. Standard power utilization voltages and percentage tolerance vary in the different mains power systems found in the world. Modern High Voltage Direct Current HVDC, electric power transmission systems contrast with the more common alternating current systems as a means for the efficient bulk transmission of electrical power over long distances. HVDC systems, however, tend to be more expensive and less efficient over shorter distances than transformers. Transmission with high voltage direct current was not feasible when Edison, Westinghouse and Tesla were designing their power systems, since there was then no way to economically convert act power to DC and back again at the necessary voltages. Three-phase electrical generation is very common. The simplest case is three separate coils in the generator stator, that are physically offset by an angle of 120 degrees to each other. Three current waveforms are produced that are equal in magnitude, and 120 degrees out of phase to each other. If coils are added opposite to these, 60 degrees spacing, they generate the same phases with reverse polarity, and so can be simply wired together. In practice, higher pole orders are commonly used. For example, a 12-pole machine would have 36 coils, 10 degrees spacing. The advantage is that lower speeds can be used. For example, a 2-pole machine running at 3600 rpm and a 12-pole machine running at 600 rpm produce the same frequency. This is much more practical for larger machines. If the load on a three-phase system is balanced equally among the phases, no current flows through the neutral point. Even in the worst case unbalanced, linear, load, the neutral current will not exceed the highest of the phase currents. Nonlinear loads, for instance, computers, may require an oversized neutral bus and neutral conductor in the upstream distribution panel to handle harmonics. Harmonics can cause neutral conductor current levels to exceed that of one or all phase conductors. For three phase at utilization voltage as a four wire system is often used. When stepping down three phase, a transformer with a delta, three wire, primary and a star, Four wire, center earthed, secondary is often used so there is no need for a neutral on the supply side. For smaller customers, just how small varies by country and age of the installation, only a single phase in the neutral or two phases in the neutral are taken to the property. For larger installations all three phases in the neutral are taken to the main distribution panel. From the three phase main panel, both single and three phase circuits may lead off. 
three-wire single-phase systems, with a single center tap transformer giving two life conductors, is a common distribution scheme for residential and small commercial buildings in North America. This arrangement is sometimes incorrectly referred to as two-phase. A similar method is used for a different reason on construction sites in the UK. Small power tools and lighting are supposed to be supplied by a local center tap transformer with a voltage of 55 V between each power conductor and earth. This significantly reduces the risk of electric shock in the event that one of the live conductors becomes exposed through an equipment fault whilst still allowing a reasonable voltage of 110 V between the two conductors for running the tools. A third wire, called the bond, or earth, wire, is often connected between non-current carrying metal enclosures and earth ground. This conductor provides protection from electric shock due to accidental contact of circuit conductors with the metal chassis of portable appliances and tools. Bonding all non-current carrying metal parts into one complete system ensures there is always a low electrical impedance path to ground sufficient to carry any fault current for, as long as it takes for the system to clear the fault. This low impedance path allows the maximum amount of fault current, causing the overcurrent protection device, breakers, fuses, to trip or burn out as quickly as possible, bringing the electrical system to a safe state. All bond wires are bonded to ground at the main service panel, as is the neutral slash identified conductor if present. ACK power supply frequencies. The frequency of the electrical system varies by country, most electric power is generated at either 50 or 60 Hz. Some countries have a mixture of 50 Hz and 60 Hz supplies, notably electricity power transmission in Japan. A low frequency eases the design of electric motors, particularly for hoisting, crushing, and rolling applications, and commutator-type traction motors for applications such as railways. However, low frequency also causes noticeable flicker, in arc lamps and incandescent light bulbs. The use of lower frequencies also, provided the advantage of lower impedance losses, which are proportional to frequency. The original Niagara Falls generators were built to produce 25 Hz power, as a compromise between low frequency for traction and heavy induction motors, while still allowing incandescent lighting to operate, although with noticeable flicker. Most of the 25 Hz residential and commercial customers for Niagara Falls power were converted to 60 Hz by the late 1950s, although some, which, 25 Hz industrial customers still existed as of the start of the 21st century 16.7 Hz power, formerly 16 and 2 thirds Hz, is still used in some European rail systems, such as in Austria, Germany, Norway, Sweden, and Switzerland. Offshore military textile industry, marine, computer mainframe, aircraft, and spacecraft applications sometimes use 400 Hz, for benefits of reduced weight of apparatus or higher motor speeds. Effects at high frequencies. A direct current flows uniformly throughout the cross-section of a uniform wire. An alternating current of any frequency is forced away from the wire's center, toward its outer surface. This is because the acceleration of an electric charge in an alternating current produces waves of electromagnetic radiation that cancel the propagation of electricity toward the center of materials with high conductivity. This phenomenon is called skin effect. At very high frequencies the current no longer flows in the wire, but effectively flows on the surface of the wire, within a thickness of a few skin depths. The skin depth is the thickness at which the current density is reduced by 63%. Even at relatively low frequencies used for power transmission, 50 to 60 Hz, non-uniform distribution of current still occurs in sufficiently thick conductors. For example, the skin depth of a copper conductor is approximately 8.57 mm at 60 Hz, so high current conductors are usually hollow to reduce their mass and cost. Since the current tends to flow in the periphery of conductors, the effective cross-section of the conductor is reduced. This increases the effective ACK resistance of the conductor, since resistance is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. The ACK resistance often is many times higher than the DC resistance, causing a much higher energy loss due to ohmic heating, also called I2R loss. Techniques for reducing ACK resistance For low to medium frequencies, conductors can be divided into stranded wires, each insulated from one other, and the relative positions of individual strands specially arranged within the conductor bundle. Wire constructed using this technique is called Litz wire. 
This measure helps to partially mitigate skin effect by forcing more equal current throughout the total cross section of the stranded conductors. Litz wire is used for making high Q inductors, reducing losses in flexible conductors carrying very high currents at lower frequencies, and in the windings of devices carrying higher radio frequency current, up to hundreds of kilohertz, such as switch mode power supplies and radio frequency transformers. Techniques for reducing radiation loss as written above, an alternating current is made an electric charge under periodic acceleration, which causes radiation of electromagnetic waves. Energy that is radiated is lost. Depending on the frequency, different techniques are used to minimize the loss due to radiation. Twisted pairs. At frequencies up to about 1 GHz, pairs of wires are twisted together in a cable, forming a twisted pair. This reduces losses from electromagnetic radiation and inductive coupling. A twisted pair must be used with a balanced signaling system, so that the two wires carry equal but opposite currents. Each wire in a twisted pair radiates a signal, but it is effectively cancelled by radiation from the other wire, resulting in almost no radiation loss. Coaxial cables. Coaxial cables are commonly used at audio frequencies, and above for convenience. A coaxial cable has a conductive wire inside a conductive tube, separated by a dielectric layer. The current flowing on the inner conductor is equal and opposite to the current flowing on the inner surface of the tube. The electromagnetic field is thus completely contained within the tube, and, ideally, no energy is lost to radiation, or coupling outside the tube. Coaxial cables have acceptably small losses for frequencies up to about 5 GHz. For microwave frequencies greater than 5 GHz, the losses, due mainly to the electrical resistance of the central conductor, become too large, making wire guides a more efficient medium for transmitting energy. Coaxial cables with an air, rather than solid dielectric are preferred as they transmit power with lower loss. Wire guides. Wire guides are similar to coax cables, as both consist of tubes, with the biggest difference being that the wire guide has no inner conductor. Wire guides can have any arbitrary cross section, but rectangular cross sections are the most common. Because wire guides do not have an inner conductor to carry a return current, wire guides cannot deliver energy by means of an electric current, but rather by means of a guided electromagnetic field. Although surface currents do flow on the inner walls of the wire guides, those surface currents do not carry power. Power is carried by the guided electromagnetic fields. The surface currents are set up by the guided electromagnetic fields, and have the effect of keeping the fields inside the wire guide, and preventing leakage of the fields to the space outside the wire guide. Wire guides have dimensions comparable to the wavelength of the alternating current to be transmitted, so they are only feasible at microwave frequencies. In addition to this mechanical feasibility, electrical resistance of the non-ideal metals forming the walls of the wire guide cause dissipation of power, surface currents flowing on lossy conductors dissipate power. At higher frequencies, the power lost to this dissipation becomes unacceptably large. Fiber optics. At frequencies greater than 200 GHz, wire guide dimensions become impractically small, and the ionic losses in the wire guide walls become large. Instead, fiber optics, which are a form of dielectric wire guides, can be used. For such frequencies, the concepts of voltages and currents are no longer used. Mathematics of AC voltages. A sine wave, over one cycle, 360 degrees. The dashed line represents the root mean square, RMS, value at about 0.707. Alternating currents are accompanied, or caused, by alternating voltages. An AC voltage V can be described mathematically as a function of time by the following equation. Where is the peak voltage, unit, volt? Is the angular frequency, unit, radians per second? The angular frequency is related to the physical frequency, unit equals hertz, which represents the number of cycles per second, by the equation. Is the time, unit, second? The peak to peak value of an AC voltage is defined as the difference between its positive peak and its negative peak. Since the maximum value of is plus 1 and the minimum value is 1, an AC voltage swings between and. The peak to peak voltage, usually written as or, is therefore power and root mean square. It has been suggested that portions of this section be moved into AC power. Discuss the relationship between voltage and the power delivered is where represents a load resistance. 
rather than using instantaneous power, it is more practical to use a time-averaged power, where the averaging is performed over any integer number of cycles. Therefore, ACK voltage is often expressed as a root mean square, RMS, value, written as, the cause, for a sinusoidal voltage. The factor is called the crest factor, which varies for different waveforms. For a triangle waveform centered about zero, for a square waveform centered about zero, for an arbitrary periodic waveform of period. Example. To illustrate these concepts, consider a 230V ACK main supply used in many countries around the world. It is so called, because its root mean square value is 230V. This means, that the time averaged power delivered, is equivalent to the power, delivered by a DC voltage of 230V. To determine the peak voltage, amplitude, we can rearrange the above equation to for 230V ACK, the peak voltage is therefore, which is about 325V. The peak to peak value of the 230V ACK is double that, at about 650V is double that, at about 650V is double that, at about 650V 